Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold. We're going to jump into Matthew 13 with Dr. Jarrett Stevens. I'm so glad he said yes and can come on the program today. I love Matthew 13. It is uh, such an amazing chapter, and we're going to kind of go through it in the deep end today, so you're going to enjoy that. Uh, Jarrett has served as cha- as a champion for a senior pastor in Houston, Texas since uh, 2021. Always glad to have him on, Jarrett. Thank you for do- saying yes today. Bill, thanks so much for having me, man. It's been a while, and uh, I'm glad to be back on the program. Thank you so much. Like in Matthew now, in chapter 12, it seems like the leaders have formally rejected Jesus and have committed the unpardonable sin. So they've rejected the king. So in light of this, let's move into 13. And and what happens to the kingdom that he's offering? He he answers this with eight parables. This is going to be fascinating. Yeah, and we're going to look at most of them today. So for those uh, listening, uh, buckle up because we're going to cover a lot of ground here. <laughs> and, you know, I uh, got this idea, Bill. Uh, I've recently preached a message series that I called The Kingdom Project. And the whole idea, I, I got this idea first back in 2000, and I think it was like 2013. I was flying into Romania on a mission trip. And uh, I was looking out over the terrain, and you could just see houses everywhere as we were flying uh, into Romania. And and this this thought, I had my Bible open, I was reading and just praying, and this thought just got me like, how are these people, these people in these houses that stretch as far as the eye can see, how are they going to hear the gospel? Like, how are they going to hear the good news of Jesus? And uh, you know, I know we have great uh, missionaries that are on the ground, wonderful, doing wonderful work. I know we have uh, great churches that are being planted all over the world. I know we've got radio and television and internet. I'm grateful for technology so people can listen to us today on the radio or on podcast at a later date. I mean, all this technology is great, but ultimately, the way that the kingdom is going to be advanced is if every person who names the name of Christ, uh, lives on mission in their sphere of influence to lead people to Jesus. And uh, that's how the that's how the gospel is going to be advanced. That's how the kingdom is going to move forward. And so God just planted this idea in my heart back in 2013. What if we mobilized as many people as possible uh, to have this kingdom heart and this kingdom mindset that they said, you know what, I'm going to wake up every single day and I'm going to have this intense burning desire in my heart to advance the kingdom of God through my life today. What would happen if we made the decision to filter how we live, to filter everything we do? I mean, if we use the skills, the passions, the intellect, the education, the spiritual gifting God has entrusted to us, what if we used all of that to advance the kingdom? And, And I just think if we did that, Not only would our own lives be transformed because we'd be experiencing the abundant life that Jesus talked about in Scripture, but we would also see our communities changed and transformed, and we would see massive kingdom impact. And so the first place to turn when I was thinking about the kingdom, one of the first places to turn uh, was Matthew 13. Uh, You know, Jesus spoke so much about the kingdom. In fact, uh, most of what we have of Jesus' teaching is in the context of him teaching about the coming kingdom of God. And uh, he was was passionate about it. And the way that I define kingdom, uh, Bill, is the realm and rule of God's uh, reign through his people. Uh, That's kind of how I determine, that's how I describe the kingdom. It's the realm and rule of God's reign through his people. And so the kingdom of God is so very important. We're told that we are to seek the kingdom. We know that, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. And we get to Matthew chapter 13, 
And uh, we just have all of these parables, as you mentioned, eight different parables on what the kingdom of God is. And so I would just love uh, today to unpack some of these uh, principles and to, to allow our listeners to really answer this question for themselves. Are they seeking the kingdom of God? Is it the ultimate priority of their life? Uh, there's a popular show. I won't advocate for it. Uh, I just really know the name of it. Uh, you know, the Game of Thrones, I think is what it was called. And uh, life is a real life Game of Thrones uh, because either self is going to be on the throne of our life. And typically when self is on the throne, uh, the priorities are alive or out of whack, they're chaos, or Jesus is going to reign on the throne. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus reigns on the throne, there's peace and there's purpose in our life. And so uh, I want us to look at Matthew 13 and see why we should allow Christ to rule and reign on the throne of his life, why we should make seeking the kingdom of God the priority of our life. And we'll see this uh, right here in Matthew chapter 13. Again, full of parables that have to do with the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus uh, was the master teacher. And one of the beautiful things about his teaching, the word parable, it, it means, the word literally means to set alongside. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes what Jesus would do in order to illustrate a truth is he would tell a story. And certainly when he's speaking about the kingdom of God, uh, you know, uh, the listeners of Jesus had in their mind one thing when they, they, they were thinking an earthly kingdom. That's what they were waiting on, right? They wanted an earthly ruler, someone who was going to come and deliver them from Roman rule and Roman power and finally set up Israel's uh, earthly reign. Well, Jesus had a whole different uh, idea in mind when he talked about the kingdom. So to explain it, he used all of these parables. Uh, one of the reasons he uses parables is because it fulfills a prophecy. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 78 too, that the future Messiah King would speak in parables. And so one of the reasons Jesus uses parables is he's, it's, it's a, uh, it is a fulfillment of prophetic scripture. But another reason is he wants us to help understand the truth of what he's talking about. So when we get to Matthew chapter 13 and we see all of these parables, we're going to see in these parables, Jesus explaining the kingdom of God. What does it look like to live under and to live for God's rule and reign? And what we're going to answer the question today, uh, Bill, is why we should seek the kingdom of God and why it should be the priority of our life. And here's what I want to do uh, to start this. Instead of starting in verse one, I want to start at the very end of uh, the chapter. I want to work back uh, from the back of the book to the front of the book. And so I want to pick up in Matthew 13. Jared, can I interrupt just for a second here? Because sure. I, I don't want to interrupt anything. Your teaching is so outstanding. But I, I do want to just let everyone know that we are in Matthew 13. If you just tuned in, Dr. Jared Stevens is our guest. And do I have it right that this was really up to this point in Jesus's ministry, he had not taught in parables. So this is a, a brand new way of teaching, isn't it? When we get to 13? Yeah, it is. It really is. Okay. And, you know, he had taught as one with authority, yes. right? Uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, Pharisees, the, the, the religious leaders, they couldn't wrap their mind around Jesus because he, he taught as one who had authority, not like their regular teachers. He obviously had his miracle working ministry to go alongside uh, his, his ministry. So there was such a, a sense of power and authority. Uh, but yes, Jesus in Matthew 13 starts using these parables and, and he always used illustrations, right? Like right. he talked in the uh, Sermon on the Mount, you know, uh, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And if you don't, uh, if you hear these words and don't put them in practice, it's like a, a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. So he's he's used word pictures before, uh, but this is where he really begins unleashing these parables. And he does it, uh, Bill, because again, this kingdom of God, uh, the people hearing this had one thing in their mind, and he was shifting their mindset by trying to uh, share these stories with them to better illustrate what he was talking about. Awesome. Okay, let's go now to the end of Matthew 13, and let's let's get in with the teaching. Yeah, yeah. We'll start in verse 44, and again, let me let me uh, let me say this about parables. Another reason Jesus spoke in them is because sometimes 
you had to work, lean in to what Jesus was saying. He would tell these stories, and sometimes he would answer a question with a story, and and he did it because for those who were seeking spiritual truth, they would lean in and go, wait, wait, what does that mean? And they would ask more questions. For those that weren't really seeking spiritual truth, they would just be turned off uh, and not do the hard work of discovering the truth of what Jesus was teaching. So there's a lot that went into these teaching of the parables. So we begin... Matthew chapter 13, I want to start in verse 44 through 46. We'll work our way back uh, to this chapter. And Bill, you tell me when we need to take a break because I love talking about this and I'll go all day. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to give uh, you all day. All right. Well, all we're right. going to look, let's look first uh, for our listener. Let's kind of compartmentalize this at why we should make seeking the kingdom of God the ultimate priority of our life. Why is it so important that we live under his rule and reign and that? We do, as Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom. So he tells this parable, Matthew 13, starting in verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all they had and bought it. Now, the first reason seeking the kingdom of God is important and should be the ultimate priority of our lives is because of its value. Like that's the word that I want to highlight and bring out. If you happen to be listening to this where you can take notes, just write down the word value. Uh, that's what Jesus is teaching here, the value of the kingdom. It was a common practice in the days of the Bible especially during times of war, if someone had something that was precious to them or didn't know uh, if their home was going to survive. You got to remember all these raiding uh, tribes would come in. What they would do is if they had something uh, special in their home, they would take it and they would bury it so that uh, someone wouldn't steal it from them. Someone wouldn't confiscate it for them. And then they would come back after the battle or after the raids left and they would dig it up and they would find their treasure. Well, evidently, this is what happened in this case. Uh, a man who we don't know what he was doing, maybe he was working in the field for someone. We're not given the exact context other than he finds this treasure, and we don't even know what the treasure is. But it was so incredibly valuable that this man goes out and he liquidates his entire worth in order to get it. Uh, so, again, we're, we're highlighting the value of the kingdom. The same is true with the merchant finding one pearl. It's so valuable. It's so precious. He goes and he sells all that he has to buy that one pearl. Jesus says, this is the kingdom of God. When we understand what we're dealing with and what the kingdom is all about, it's worth giving everything to make sure that we're a part of it. And make no mistake, God has to show us, he has to reveal to us the kingdom. What I love about this parable is notice the contrast in these two parables we just read. In the first one, a man simply comes up on the treasure. He wasn't looking for it that we know of. Uh, he didn't even know it was there. He just kind of stumbled upon it. And that's exactly the way some people listening to me right now today found the kingdom of God. You weren't looking for it. You didn't even know it was existed. It just kind of came up on you. This is the grace of God that you were hearing the message of the kingdom all that it means, and the Lord by his power uh, saved you, showed you the value of the kingdom, and called you to himself, and you said, just like this man, I've got to have it. Mm -hmm. I'll sell anything to make it mine, and, and, and it brings you so much joy, just like it did this man. He sold everything because he knew that what he was getting in return was worth so much more. The, the contrast, though, is while some found the kingdom and weren't even looking for it, others that are listening to me right now are like this merchant. Like you're searching for something valuable. Maybe the way that you found Christ is that you were searching for something that found, uh, that gave your life meaning and purpose and fulfillment. And because you've been looking and nothing has done it, when the kingdom message, when you heard that for the first time, and again, it's all by God's grace that you heard it, you said, man, this is the pearl that I've been looking for. This is, this is worth selling everything I have. And so whether it's the treasure in the field or the pearl that the merchants finds, these two people see the incredible value and know that it's worth giving everything up for. So the question is, why should we be seeking the kingdom above all? Why should it be the priority of our lives? Jesus says right here through this teaching of this parable, consider its value. His rule, his reign in our life, 
living under his kingship, with our sins forgiven, being made right with God, and expanding his rule and reign in and through our life right now, uh, and ultimately our reign with him in the future kingdom to come, there is nothing worth more. It is the greatest treasure in all the earth. The kingdom of God and all it entails, it's priceless. It's the blessedness of the kingdom. And so the one word, uh, if you want to ask it, why should I seek the kingdom above all and have Christ reigning and ruling in my life above all? Because the incredible value of the kingdom. Well, all right, Jared. I've already got a page of notes. So during the break, I'm going to see if I can read my own handwriting because I'm already in trouble, I think. But uh, uh-huh. we're going to come back and continue studying Matthew chapter 13. If you have your Bible, definitely get it out and grab a notebook because there's lots of notes to be taken Dr. Jarrett Stevens is my guest, and we'll be right back. This is Suzy Larson, host of Suzy Larson Live. Maybe you have a loved one that you've been praying for for years, and they still haven't trusted Jesus. Or maybe you have a loved one who once had a vibrant faith, but has since walked away. If this is true for you, know this. You're not alone. God sees you. He loves you. And he knows about the heartache you feel. And we care about it, too. I've recorded 15 audio clips to encourage your soul. Text the word HEART to 877-933-2484. Bible study time, my favorite thing to do. Pastor Dr. Jared Stevens is our guest, and we're talking about Matthew 13, an incredible chapter. Jesus starts talking in parables in 13, and uh, we're going to go through all eight of them. So where do we pick up, Jared? Yeah, well, we were just emphasizing uh, that the w- one of the reasons that seeking the kingdom of God is important, the reason it should be the priority of our life, we're seeking his rule and reign, is because there's nothing more valuable right. than the kingdom of God. Uh, there's a second reason that we seek the kingdom of God, make it the priority of our life, make sure that everything that we're doing is revolving around uh, the king and his kingdom, and that is because of the power of the kingdom of God. So uh, the first reason is the value of the kingdom. The second reason is the power. And this is, uh, uh, we're, again, we're working our way backwards through the parable. This is Matthew 13, starting in verse 31. Uh, listen to what Jesus uh, says to them about this other parable. He puts another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, and when it is grown, it is larger than all of the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make a nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leaven. Now, again, remember the context of what's taking place. Jesus is teaching his disciples about the kingdom, and this isn't an easy uh, concept to grasp. Uh, their mind was on a military takeover, a physical kingdom. This is this is one of the reasons uh, you talked about uh, Jesus being rejected when we started the show, Bill. This is one of the reasons that Jesus was rejected is because he didn't fit in the preconceived notions they had of what a king was and what a coming kingdom looked like. And so Jesus in, in Matthew 13 is educating them, or I should say re-educating them about the kingdom. And in this parable that we just read, these two parables, he's teaching them about the kingdom's power. Uh, If you want to know why your life should revolve around the kingdom, it's because, as we just read, there's nothing more valuable. And as we're reading right now, there's nothing more powerful in all of the world. And he uses this imagery that would have been so familiar to the people listening to Jesus uh, teach. This was an agrarian culture. You know, I've had the privilege of going to Israel a number of times, and they call it the breadbasket of the Middle East uh, because they grow everything there. And uh, it's so lush and it's so green. And in this agrarian culture, Jesus uses this parable. He said it's like a grain of a mustard seed. Uh, you know, a mustard seed is the smallest of all garden seeds. If 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 the audience could see me right now and, and I could, you know, point it out. I mean, it's as small as the, the head of a pen. It's so tiny. And yet over time... It can grow to be large. In this case, Jesus says it grows to be a big tree. He says this is the kingdom of God. It's going to start small, and this is exactly how it started. It started with Jesus, and it started with his disciples. But what happened over time is as Jesus' disciples went to all of the world preaching the gospel and making disciples, 
it grew into this very large tree. And here's what's so beautiful about this. Every time we use our gifts and our talents and our abilities to bring heaven to earth through our actions, every time we share the message of the gospel with someone and they hear it, whether they receive the good news or not, the kingdom expands and grows and advances. And so Jesus applies the same truth to leaven or to yeast. He says a little bit of yeast which is mixed in with the flour and water and baked over time, that yeast works its way through the entire batch, the entire loaf of bread. You can't hardly see it. You don't hardly notice it, but what a difference it makes. Uh, This is the kingdom of God. It's so powerful that it can turn a small seed into a massive tree and it can turn, uh, uh, it can work its way through an entire batch of bread, an entire loaf of bread. This is the advance of the kingdom. Scottish theologian A.B. Bruce said that these two parables together represent the extensive and expansive growth of the kingdom. Again, the kingdom is extremely valuable, incredibly powerful, and what's beautiful about these parables is we're working our way backwards. We're going to see This whole idea of the value of the kingdom and the power of the kingdom culminating in the first parable that Jesus shares out of Matthew chapter 13. So I want us to be uh, look at verse 3 now. We've worked our way all the way from the back to the front. And what we're going to see in Matthew 13 is a culmination of Jesus illustrating the value and the power of the kingdom. This is so good. Listen uh, to verses 3 through 9. I'm going to read it. And as I do... I want those listening, I want you to be thinking about these two words. Let it be at the, at the top of your mind, value and power, as I read. And he told them many things in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, if we had time to keep reading, uh, the disciples come to Jesus, and and they want to know probably what some people are asking right now. Why are you teaching in parables? Would you just tell us what you mean, like, come out and say it, Jesus. Uh, And what's interesting about Matthew 13, Bill, is this is one of the few times, don't know if you knew this, a little Bible trivia here, but this is one of the few times in Scripture that Jesus actually interprets a parable that he just taught. Um, Usually, in these parables, he just let them sit, Mm -hmm. right? And just what we talked about, people would either get frustrated and just throw up their hands and walk away because they didn't understand it. Or they would show their spiritual seekers and say, hey, talk to us, ask us more. Mm-hmm. Here, it just says, would you explain it? In Matthew 13, this parable of the sower, it's one of the only parables in scripture that Jesus actually interprets. And so again, we're thinking value and power of the kingdom and why we should be seeking the kingdom. Listen to how Jesus interprets this parable, starting in verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, This is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. Now, Bill, for the life of me, (laughs) I have read this parable countless times. I have heard this parable preached on hundreds of times, and I've preached on this parable for, before. And every time I've taught this parable, uh, I've always seen it to be about believers and unbelievers. 
Like uh, the way that I've always put it is that, you know, there are four types of soil here Mm -hmm. and three of them represent uh, unbelievers because they don't produce any fruit. And the last one, which is good soil, represents a believer because it bears all of this fruit. And maybe there's an element to this that's true, maybe, but here's what I want us to think about. Put on your kingdom glasses. Okay. And if you read this parable uh, with the idea that we are living now for a future kingdom, uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, you, as as creations, from, when Jesus comes to live in us, think about this. We, we are made from the, the dust of the ground, and when Jesus comes to take residence in us, We are a combination of heaven and earth. And when God, the Holy Spirit, lives in us, our job is to now bring heaven to earth in our actions. We are to live in such a way that we give people uh, a a taste of the kingdom of God. Uh, You know, you go to a good restaurant and they have appetizers and those appetizers are awesome. And when the appetizers are good, you know the meal is going to be good. Well, (laughs) we are to live in such a way that we give people, we're giving them an appetizer, we're giving them a taste of the future kingdom to come. Well, this parable, talking about the future kingdom, while it represents the heart of men, put your kingdom glasses on. This doesn't represent believers and unbelievers. What Jesus is talking to here is sons and daughters of the kingdom. He's talking about those who are following the king. And so talk about value and power. The way to a productive and fruitful life is the message of the kingdom falling on good soil. But this same message, it's so powerful and so valuable. Check this out. The enemy, he knows it's valuable. He knows it's powerful. And the last thing he wants is for this message to take root in believer's life. Mm -hmm. And so what does he do? He comes, just as Jesus says in this parable, and he snatches it away from our heart because he does not want that seed to take root because he knows the incredible power of the kingdom of God. And so Satan's like that bird. He'll come and he takes it away. He snatches it out. He'll try to distract us, discourage us. He doesn't want the message of the kingdom. He knows its worth. He knows its power. He doesn't want us want it taking root in our heart. So he'll snatch it away however he sees fit. So this parable that we're looking at right here, it doesn't have to do with unbelievers. It has to do with sons and daughters of the kingdom not understanding and recognizing the reality of the kingdom of God and what it fully means. Wow, Jared, that's a very powerful insight. Um, I'm going to have to take a break, and then I'm going to have to call some of my friends and tell them to start listening immediately, because we are, <laughs> we, we're going to continue this discussion with Dr. Jared Stevens in Matthew 13. That is a powerful illustration you just gave, uh, and I think for most of us, it's a major paradigm shift, Jared. It is a paradigm shift, and let's unpack it when we come back. Oh, I, can't, I can't wait. All right. We're going to take a very short break. Let's speed this break up. We'll be right back. It's the afternoon show with Bill Arno. Drive time, drive time. Let's get it started. Jump in your car. Yeah. What's for dinner? Hey. I'm back with Dr. Jarrett Stevens, and we're talking about Matthew 13 today. We're just doing a Bible study, but I also want to let you know uh, Jarrett's written a couple books. Uh, the Always God, He Hasn't Changed, and You Are Not Forgotten. There's also an amazing book he wrote called The Mountains Are Calling, Climbing, Making the Climb for a Clearer View of God and Ourselves. I've read that book, and it's an amazing book, but we're just... We're in Matthew 13 today, and this paradigm shift we just went through with the parable of the sower was really quite amazing. I have not calmed down yet, Jarrett. Yeah, it. Uh, when I first uh, was turned on to this, just studying the kingdom, mm-hmm. it, it is evolutionary thought. Again, I've always taught Matthew 13, the parable of the sower, that you know the the the, the soil represents the hearts of people, right? 
and uh, the ones that don't produce fruit, though they're they're not Christians. And the the last one that falls on good soil that is a Christian, they hear the word and understand it and bear fruit. Uh, and so that's how I've always taught it. But that's not the case. He's speaking in the context of the kingdom of God, and we're talking about the kingdom. Why we should seek it first? Why our lives should revolve around it? Because nothing has more value. Nothing has more power. So w- with putting those uh, you know kingdom glasses on. It makes so much more sense to read it the way that we're saying, seeing it because of the incredible value and power of the kingdom of God. Satan knows its value, knows its power. And so that's what we were just saying. Jesus interpreting the own parable says that, that the evil comes and snatches away what's sown in his heart. We, we hear the kingdom. We want the kingdom, but uh, we, we want to learn more. But what happens is Satan distracts us, discourages us, and he'll do anything to snatch because he does not want that seed of the kingdom taking root in our heart. Well, look at the way that he interprets this the second one. Uh, you know, he says, uh, as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet has no root in himself. And he endures for a while, but when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. And what happens? People will receive the kingdom of God. They think this is it. But what happens is, and it's not, you know, it's not, uh, uh, they go through pain, they go through hardship, they go through trouble, life throws them a curveball, either God allows it, uh, Satan does it, and what that believer thinks is, I didn't sign up for this, you know, I'm living for the kingdom, but I didn't know it was going to cost me this, and so and so they they give up, they don't endure, uh, and incidentally, uh, I, well, I might, maybe I shouldn't say incidentally, providentially, this is why Jesus shared the parable about the treasure and the pearls because he wanted to highlight and underscore for the disciples the worth of the kingdom, the value of the kingdom. Because when your life centers around the kingdom, when your life uh, revolves around living for the kingdom, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you a reputation. It might cost you a business deal. It could cost you a reputation uh, or your a relationship. It might cost you some sleep. I mean, look, living for the kingdom is not for sissies. Uh, And and so uh, it costs. And uh, there are other people that hear the message of the kingdom. You're a son or daughter of the kingdom. And yet your life is not productive or fruitful because of verse 22, life's worries and riches and pleasures, they choke the message of the kingdom out. And my inclination, Bill, is I've pastored and uh, walked with a lot of people through the years. This is where most Christians live. And again, this is why I believe this parable is for Christians, not for Christians and 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 unbelievers. Uh, because I believe most Christians live right here with the kingdom of God. They want the kingdom of God, but they want the pleasures of another kingdom as well. Mm-hmm. They want the pleasures of an earthly kingdom. And these dueling kingdoms in our life, This again, this real life game of thrones is going on, and it prevents uh, believers from bearing fruit. Uh, that's why the third part of verse 22 says you're unproductive, you're unfruitful. Uh, and it's because in the words of Jesus elsewhere from scripture, they're lukewarm. The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches are choking the message of the kingdom out. And I think this is where uh, most uh, Christians um, would find themselves, that, that they have the kingdom in their heart. Uh, but again, Satan knows how valuable it is. Satan knows how powerful it is. And so what does he do? He wants to raise up competing loyalties and allegiances in our life. And what happens is it ends up choking the seed of of the kingdom. And so we don't bear fruit. See, the kingdom message is powerful, uh, but only when we're fully uh, submitting our lives to it. Uh, It's, 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 it's powerful only when we sell everything and go all in, only when we seek it first, uh, will it change us and change those around us. And so I would really encourage uh, those listening to us right now to do an honest assessment of their life and go, you know what, what uh, right now I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just throwing a seed, you know, to, to live out this parable. Uh, I'm the sower today. And the seed is the message of the kingdom that we're preaching, God's rule and reign and how our lives should revolve around it. And as I throw this seed out, it's landing on soil. And I would just encourage those listening to really ask the Holy Spirit, what kind of soil is it falling on? Um, Is it falling on a heart where you hear it, 
and you want it, but you know what, Satan, as soon as this uh, radio shows over and the dial goes off or you have to get out of your car where you're listening from or you push whatever, Satan's going to come and he's going to snatch it away. He's going to want to remove it from your mind as soon as possible because he doesn't want to take and root. And others of you, you receive it with joy. You're listening to it and you're leaning in and you're like, man, this is what I want. But let me let me tell you this. you Your life revolves around the kingdom. Hardship's coming. Uh, trials are coming. It's been said you're either in a trial you know, going through a trial or in the midst of a trial, uh, coming out of a trial, we're all going through it. And Satan wants to use those trials to trip us up. Jesus wants to use them as tests to make a stand. And, um, and, and if you allow it to trip you up, uh, you're doing exactly what the scripture says. You're hearing it with joy, but you have no root. You endure for a while, but when trouble or persecution come, you immediately fall away. And let me just say parenthetically this to those that are listening, you study the kingdom of God, And you will see that the kingdom of God is advanced mainly in two ways. Number one, through our good deeds, Christians doing good works in the name of Jesus. And number two, through suffering. That's how the kingdom of God is advanced. And when we go through these tough times, we ought not fall away. But instead, we lean in and we trust the Lord no matter what it is we're going through. And people look at that and they see us and they go, how can you do that? And that gives us an opportunity and a platform to share the Jesus. And when we do that, guess what? The kingdom of God is advanced. So if you are receiving this word with joy, don't, when hardship or persecution comes, fall away. You hang in there because this is going to be your greatest platform to advance the kingdom. Two main ways we advance the kingdom, good works and suffering. So we endure. And if you're the soil where the seed is being choked by life's worries, by life's riches, by life's pleasures, uh, my challenge to you is to do a little weed control, right? Uh, (laughs) You let the Holy Spirit through confession of sin and through prayer, uh, you need to, you need to do a little weed control and ask the Lord uh, to remove some things in your life uh, that are choking the seed of the word of the kingdom for, from doing the work uh, that it, it it can do. Because again, there is nothing more valuable and there is nothing more powerful than the word of God. And we see this in the last soil because when it falls on good soil and that good soil represents a soft heart, when it falls on that good soil, the Bible says it will indeed bear fruit and yield in one case a hundredfold in another 60 and in another 30. And this is where we want uh, to be. We want our hearts soft uh, so that when the, the message of the kingdom that we're hearing right now, when it falls on our life and it falls in our heart, uh, we, we cultivate our hearts in such a way, soft hearts, that it takes root and uh, produces much fruit for years to come. That's where we want to be. All right. Dr. Jarrett Stevens is my guest. Jarrett, when when I go back, and I'm, I've got a notes from a page ago that said, when you said the kingdom expands or grows or advances when we make an effort. And I thought, boy, is that encouraging for people that share their faith and do what they can do when they can do it and make a point of doing it. And they're intentional. And sometimes they walk away going, well, I didn't yield anything. That was, I just got rejected, but that's not the way the kingdom grows. Does it? No. It, the fact that they shared their faith is advancement right. of, That's it, that you're advancing the kingdom by you being obedient to what God's called you to do. Yeah, and that's very encouraging. Now, now I'm thinking about this salvation issue regarding these verses, and I sometimes will lay this parable template over the lives of some friends of mine that have either backslidden or have even renounced their faith. And then I start to put them into a category where they were they ever true believers? Did they did the worries and troubles of life just crowd them out and they couldn't, they just didn't walk by faith anymore. And I thought, I, have I missed this my whole, like my whole life? Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, you put your kingdom glasses on. Yes. Like I said before, there may be an element of truth to that interpretation bill, Yeah, but you put your kingdom glasses on. And to me, it makes way more sense what we're talking about here because, uh, the, the, so we're so in the message of the kingdom and Satan knows its value and he knows its power. And so look at what he does to try to, dis- to prevent this message from taking root in our hearts and our lives revolving around it. So Jared, we need to live in a way consistent with the kingdom values. Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. I'm going to take a little break. Dr. Jared Stevens is my guest. We are in Matthew 13. 
If you've heard something you would like some clarification on or you've got a question for Jared, you can text it over 877-933-2484. Again, 877-933-2484. And if you missed this uh, hour, I hope that you're going to the app. But if you're listening right now, you didn't miss it. But if you want to hear the whole thing again, you can go to the uh, Faith Radio app. You can listen live or listen on demand. You just download the free Faith Radio Network app. You can text the word APP, A-P-P, to 877-933-2484, and it's real easy. Okay, we'll be right back with Jarrett. Hi, podcast listener. You know, I'm Bill Arnold, and my theme song says, What's for Dinner? And like when I'm grilling, I'm paying really close attention, and I know that ideal second to get the food off the grill. Like all good and ideal timings in life, right now would be an ideal time to be a cheerful giver to Faith Radio. Give now to support this podcast so that more people in more places might come to saving faith in Jesus and grow in their relationship and become a fully devoted follower. Click the link in the show notes or give now at myfaithradio.com. Welcome back to the show. Dr. Jared Stevens is my guest. We are in Matthew 13, talking about the parables. So during the break, Jared, I was thinking of the prophecies in the Old Testament, and there would not have been a lot of prophecies of the kingdom that would have would have envisioned maybe this coming of the kingdom into people's hearts as they responded to the word. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay. They were look- yeah, they were looking for... For that earthly power, that earthly rule, and it makes sense, right? I mean, we we that's just human nature. Uh, but of course, Jesus came first in humility, and so uh, obviously he had a different kind of kingdom he was setting up. But uh, he is coming again, and uh, when he comes again, he will set up his earthly rule and reign, and we will live with him forever and ever and ever in his forever kingdom. And so that's the the beauty of the kingdom of God is we live under his rule and reign now, giving people a foretaste of the future kingdom to come. And so that's how we ought to be. We ought to be living right now, how we're going to live in the future kingdom with Jesus minus minus sin and all that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And Jared, I'd love for you to talk about the, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. I think that has thrown people off course a little bit. You know, it's a mystery. It's secret. It's hidden. What does that mean? I thought. Wouldn't Jesus yeah. want everyone to hear his words and embrace them? Why is it a mystery and, and only a select group can understand or hear it? Yeah, well, you know, it's just like these parables. Uh, they, they, they reveal truth, but they also conceal truth. That's the point of a parable. Uh, and uh, the Lord, um, you know, he, he's going to call people to himself. I don't pretend to know his way. You know, Isaiah tells us that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We do know, according to Paul, that we see through a mirror dimly. So we just don't understand everything. I mean, Paul was caught up to the third heaven and uh, said, you know, if he could have explained what he saw, we'd be running out in front of the road right now just to get run over so we could go there. Uh, Because he said there's, you know, no eye has seen nor ear has heard nor the heart of man can conceive what God has prepared for those who love him. And so uh, in a way, uh, yes, it is secret. Uh, what it's going to be like, the details of it. Uh, But in in another way, um, Jesus gave all of these kingdom parables to show us exactly what the kingdom is going to be like. And so uh, while we don't see it fully, um, uh, we can get enough of a taste of it uh, that we can look forward to it with high anticipation and expectation. Mm -hmm. And Jared, when we go through the the four different seeds, I I see that the seed that falls on hard the hard ground is is eaten by the birds i see that as satan but when it comes to like the seed on the rocky places does mm-hmm. that represent someone that is just suffering from persecution or are we saying satan's involved in that one too well i i think you know uh, i i think we got to be careful about reading too much into the specific grounds what does okay. that rocky ground mean but I, I i do i do would love to elaborate on this point because it is important um, is, you know, trials and temptations are, are two different sides of the same coin. Uh, so, you know, Satan sends temptations into our life to cause us to fall. God sends tests into our life to cause us to stand. Mm-hmm. It's, it's two sides of the same coin. Uh, God's allowing whatever Satan tempts us with, God's allowing. 
And so we're tempted by, we know that God doesn't send temptations. James tells us uh, God doesn't tempt anyone. He doesn't send temptation. Satan sends the temptation. But God certainly does test us to purify our faith. And so uh, a test that God sends into our life, ultimately nothing touches the child of God without filtering through God's hands. This is the doctrine of his sovereignty. Um, so uh, we may see it as a trial uh, or a test, and it could be a temptation uh, from the enemy to fall away from him, uh, a test from the Lord to strengthen our faith. And so really it's what are we going to you know, what are we going to to see it as? Uh, and and who are we going to trust in it? And so, you know, that 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 rocky ground, uh, you know, the Lord allows persecution and trouble and heartache. I mean, he 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 told his disciples, I'm sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. Now, you know, I don't work at a zoo, uh, but I've watched enough National Geographic to know that's not a good thing. Uh, sheep <laughs> mm-hmm. in the midst of wolves. Jesus said, I'm sending you, you know, yeah. Jesus. When he was tempted in the wilderness, he was sent into the wilderness, the scripture says, Matthew chapter 4, by the Spirit of God to be tempted by the devil. So God allows persecution and hardship. He allows trials and troubles. And what he wants us to do is to lean in and our faith to be strengthened. And what Satan wants to do is to use those same trials and troubles to tempt us to fall away. So, you know... um, uh, the the answer to your question is yes. Okay. Um, so you, you know it's 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 two sides of the same coin, and the the question is how are how are we going to respond? Is our heart going to be soft so that it doesn't? It's not rocky ground that uh, falls away when trouble and hardship. And a lot of a lot of this uh, bill comes with expectation. You know what do you, you you know we have bought into the American church that come to Christ and your problems go away, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus and and man, you'll never get sick. You'll never, you know, you'll have everything that you need, and that's 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 not scripturally uh, correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can Jesus, and life may really, really, really get hard. So uh, we've got to, you know, what are we expecting in that? Yeah, Jared, two minutes left. So one more question in ver- in verse twelve. It says, "Whoever ha- uh, has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have." Even what they have will be taken from them. Is that all connected to the seed? Yeah, well, it, it's it's connected to uh, the accountability of what do we do with Jesus's teaching. Okay. So he said, "Why do you speak to them in parables?" He said, "To you has been given the secrets of the kingdom of God." So it, it it's it's talking about to, when you receive the spiritual truth, what what you do with it is very important. Um, the the stewardship and accountability of what you've been entrusted with, and so uh, to you know to, to him who has, it, when you receive that, more will be given. And so it's it's and if to uh, the one who he says the one, uh, but the one who has not, even what he has, uh, will be taken away. So it it's having to do with the accountability and stewardship of what we do with this message of the kingdom that is entrusted to us. And let me just say this in a minute closing is, you know, we talked about why we should seek the kingdom because of its value and power. And I would just encourage those listening uh, just in this final minute, uh, the how to seeking the kingdom. And um, you, you seek it with your mind. Uh, you know, I say head, heart, and hands. You seek it with your mind, uh, making sure that you're taking every thought captive, making sure that you're giving your mind to the word of God. Uh, don't be conformed to the world. Romans 12 will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You make sure that you keep a soft heart. And I don't know how to keep a soft heart but to prayer and to seeking uh, good. And then with your hands, you get in the game, roll up your sleeves and get into the game. And as you're serving the Lord, uh, you'll see that you are seeking uh, his kingdom. So it's head, heart, and hands. That's how we seek the kingdom. Just love it. This has been awesome teaching. Thank you so much, Jared, for being on the show. It's been a delight having you. Always a privilege, Bill. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Pastor Dr. Jarrett Stevens has been my guest. If you want to learn more about him, and I'm going to go check out the sermon series based on what he has been teaching today because I want to get more of this myself, you can go to championforest.org, championforest.org. And if you missed any of this hour, I know I'm going to listen to it tonight when I get home, you definitely want to go to the podcast and check it out. That wraps up our show for the day and for the week. Thank you for supporting Faith Radio. See you next week.
Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.